Good morning, Miramar, and welcome to the show. I'm your host, Tamara G. Don't forget, you can check us out on all of our social media. We're on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at City of Miramar. That's M-I-R-A-M-A-R. We also know it's right here in Miramar, and right here with us this morning is attorney Joran Jenkins. She has 40 plus years of courtroom experience, even though she doesn't look like it at all. She started when she was eight, probably. Um, <laughs> and she, of course, is um, has written several books. And we're going to be talking with her today about divorcing during COVID. Uh, but yes, she has definitely been an author of books dealing with this subject. And we want to talk to her about it because divorce is never a good thing. But particularly during this time, it's probably the worst. So we'll get to that in just a minute. Let me just name two of her books, War or Peace, Avoiding the Destruction of Divorce Court, and I Never Saw My Father Again, The Divorce Court Effect. So welcome to the show, Attorney Jenkins. Good morning, Tamara. <laughs> we are so happy to have you here. And, um, you know, you have dealt with this as far as uh, seeing it in the courtroom, seeing it in private practice. But during this time of COVID, we wanted to talk about this because divorce is never a good thing. Or is it a good thing? You tell us as an attorney. You know, it's a funny thing because uh, I often recommend that my consultations go see a marriage counselor. So I, but this is a personal belief, right? Everyone has their, their personal belief systems, their religious belief systems, their political belief systems. We know this. Mm -hmm. um, I personally believe that uh, that marriage, you should make sure that divorce is what you need and want and what's best for your family unit. Um, and and uh, a lot of times people come back to me after their counseling, but, um, but I get reports too that, wow, that was a great idea. Thank you for recommending a counselor. It worked out really well for us. And I've even had people reconcile during the divorce process. Wow, that's amazing. You still got paid, but <laughs> they did reconcile, so that's a good thing. Um, talk to us a little bit about divorcing during COVID, because I know when the world stopped back in March, first the first thing that happened was everything shut down, including courtrooms and, and court proceedings, and every, like nothing was happening. So tell us a little bit about how you navigated that sea or how families are navigating that and how they're doing now. Well, I think what happened was uh, it was very quiet for six weeks. I mean, we, we track our numbers. It was very quiet for six weeks. Uh, everything stopped, as you say. It was like the world seized. Um, and then uh, I started getting phone calls again. And April was a, a very, April, from mid-April to mid-May, end of May, was very, very busy in my office. Um, we started using Zoom exclusively. Um, I got very comfortable with Zoom. The judges did not. Um, uh, it took the while. Uh, it took the judges a while to catch up. And it wasn't the judges in particular. Some judges are very tech savvy and friendly to uh, computers and computer systems, but certainly the administrative system takes longer to change. The bureaucracy, we call it, takes longer to change. So right. I was it took say, them a while. Yeah, this just flipped and, everybody from, from the clerk. And it depends to... on what county you're in. Mm -hmm. So we've got counties that are more advanced than others. Uh, we've got counties, uh, I operate primarily out of six counties up here in Tampa, Florida. Um, and we have counties that are still on the telephone uh, for hearings. Uh, and, and they can't have evidentiary hearings where you're introducing more than testimony. Testimony is evidence, too. The words out of your mouth are evidence. But, but if you have documentary evidence, you can't really put it in when you're, uh, when you're uh, on the telephone. You can't show someone a document on the telephone. Right. Some people are using uh, Skype, which I don't find as user-friendly as Zoom. Um, but then we ran into a problem with Zoom technology, you know, with um, um, bombing, I think it was called. I was going to say, you didn't so. have somebody streaking across the, the back of your Zoom in the middle of your court proceeding. Oh, no. But okay. but we had attorneys who were not Zoom friendly. So <laughs> there is currently there is currently a video going around. The judges shared it with a room full of lawyers where the lawyer was sitting in front of his computer and for some reason turned the screen like this and then got up from the table and you could clearly see 
that he was not wearing pants. pants. And it was a female lawyer and a female judge. And when he came back, and here's the worst part, when he came back, the judge said, sir, are you not wearing pants? And he lied. He said, of course I'm wearing pants, judge. And we all saw that he wasn't. Oh, it was um, it was kind of a shocking moment for me. We've all heard the stories about the attorney uh, doing the uh, hunkering down under the bedclothes and doing a hearing, you know, while she's still in bed. Um, and that was early on. Yeah. I'm sure but that, that is those... so hard to do because you're now Zoom is just like being on camera. It's just like being there. So and I can understand I've got the I've got blog posts about appearing on camera. Come on, people, <laughs> you know, move with the times. Get with it. You're right. I'm 63. Right. You know, I, I, but, but I'm here, I'm zoom friendly. I, I like appearing by zoom a lot of the times and the judges will do um, hearings. There are a lot of hearings we can do by zoom where I am saving my clients two hours of billing time at $500 an hour. I don't have to get in the car, drive downtown, find parking, walk to the courthouse, get through uh, the, the, um, the things that you have mm -hmm. to get through to make sure you're not carrying a gun. Mm -hmm. Right. Wait for the other hearings um, and then reverse all that for a five minute hearing. I can do five minute hearings and charge my clients for, you know, one tenth of an hour. Right. So Done. this obviously, you know, COVID has definitely changed some things. Zoom, of course, is helping. But are you finding that couples are waiting to see how this is all going to play out before they do go to divorce court? In other words, are people trying to work it out? Well, I think 2020 is already a bad year and I don't need to add a divorce on top of it. <laughs> it is a bad year. It is a bad year. May 2021 be 20 <laughs> times better than Amen. 2020. Um, and by the way, I have 2020 hindsight like you wouldn't believe. It's already in my rear view. It's mirror. in your rear view. <laughs> exactly. But but some good things happened. Mm -hmm. The judges learned, a lot of them learned that they can save the, the clients money. Think about the pro bono clients who have to get themselves to the courthouse, the guys who don't, the pro says who don't have money to hire an attorney, much less take the day off of work, get a cab or not a cab today, um, Uber. Actually, <laughs> get, actually get a bus and oh, then wow. a bus transfer. I've got stories from judges, a bus transfer and then an Uber. Okay. okay. And then they have to reverse all that. So they've spent the day for a half hour hearing or a 10 minute hearing. Mm -hmm. um, so all of that is good. Now, the, the couples in particular, what happened with them was they spent six weeks cooped, in, cooped up in the house 24 seven. And they found out that they were thinking about divorce, but now they're just focused on divorce. And so those people are getting those divorces. The problem is, moving out of the house during COVID for a while was really, really tough. Mm -hmm. um, and so, but I think that's one reason we've had a, a rise in, um, in the market, the selling marketplace of housing, because people have finally come to grips. I can't do this anymore. It was fine when I could get away for eight hours or 16 hours. Um, and we were living our separate lives, but we were friends. We were okay. Now we're sniping at each other all the time. Now we're fighting all the time. Now money has become a real problem. Um, and, and so it's bringing things to a head for a lot of couples, well, uh, know, forcing them into the decision-making. Right. And I was going to say, attorney Jenkins, that's when, you know, we, my friends and I were making these jokes at the beginning of COVID that, oh, you're going to find out if you really like this person or not, <laughs> because you're with them now 24 seven, like literally it, it, it seems like it was so long ago, but it was just in March um, yeah. when everything shut down, like you couldn't go out to eat. You couldn't go out to movies. You couldn't go out to, um, you know, concerts, anything that would keep you away from that person for a little while. You couldn't go to work. So right. that 24 seven started grading on people. And, right. and and now are you seeing the effects of that, you know, nine months later in your practice? Certainly in the numbers. Um, and I will suggest this to you as well. I've heard stories about people whose apartments were fine when they were not in them all day long. But now in such close proximity, both of them trying to work their jobs from the same space, it became even more of a problem. So COVID exacerbated some problems. Um, 
But I'll also share with you that that one thing that my office is doing, uh, you know, we do coll- a lot of collaborative divorce where the two attorneys sign an agreement not to go to court. And so we we work those those uh, divorces out. We res- I like to say we restructure the family. We don't destroy it. Mm-hmm. Um, and so what I've had people de- deciding to do is before they try a divorce, they want to try collaborative life planning. So they've they've realized that they have an issue. Um, and, and they want to try and work on a written agreement, what most people would call a post-marital agreement, okay. except that what we do is we, we get them each a lawyer and the lawyer sign an agreement that they're not going to go to court. So we're not planning a divorce. We're planning on how do we live our lives post COVID? How do we make this work in high trauma, um, in normal or in normal circumstances and a written agreement, because I hate to tell you, you get to be my age and you realize you, you forget things. You forget <laughs> even the most things that you think were really important at the time, like whether I was allowed to give away my daughter's rabbit hutch, um, which was on my mind for years because it was taking up space in the garage. And the week before she had told me yes, and I wasn't sure she said yes. So I called her and said, I, uh, I need to double check before I give it away. You know, so we, we write out these agreements and then they have something they can look back on. They can ignore it if they want to, who cares? But if they want to stick to it, then there it is in writing. And I was going to ask that question, Attorney Jenkins, that obviously, you know, divorcing is never easy. It's really not what people want. It, it happens. But what you just is, talked about, the collaborative um, agreement for this, don't you have to have two rational thinking people? And usually that's not the case in a divorce. <laughs> so, so keep in mind that, in, and by the way, I'm a trial lawyer. I've been a trial lawyer for 40 years. I started out as a state attorney prosecuting criminals. I love trial work. But families don't belong, in my opinion, families don't belong in the courtroom. Mm -hmm. And so if I can keep a family out of the courtroom, there are plenty of good reasons why. And one of the reasons is that um, when you go to court, you make it worse automatically. You just automatically make it worse because you have to say the worst things that you can to get the best possible result for you, yourself, and you alone. Um, if you're really working for your family, then the results become a little bit different. We focus people on their future five years from now, not on the moment. And the lawyers in a collaborative divorce aren't trying to make things worse. They're not always saying, well, I can get you a better result in front of the judge. They don't do that. We right. say, are you sure this is what is best for your family? I understand that you want to stay in the house right this moment, but you really aren't going to be able to afford the house. And neither is your husband. So let's talk about getting you something comparable, but a little smaller, where you don't need to worry about who's going to take care of the pool, who's going to mow the lawn for you, who's going to take care of the trees, um, you know, a townhome. So we, we talk to people about other alternatives and really focus them on the future rather than I want the most out of my divorce that I can get. I want the house. I want the bank accounts. I want the kids. I want the money. You know, I mean... So it's a different kind of approach. Yeah. It uh, again, I think you have to have be rational. I don't. I think you can't be in your. Feelings. We help them be rational. Okay. So there's there's something going on there when we focus people on the future, it kind of helps them um, really calm down, de-stress. When you're in the stress of the moment, it's kind of like uh, you know you lose a tooth, you keep sticking your tongue in the tooth in the in the empty socket. It hurts every time you do that. Why do you do that? So instead of going round and round and round about your latest fight, you know, what was your wedding like? Why did you marry this guy? Are you, were you happy at the time? What's it going to be like five years from now when you have your own little space and you can go home at night and know that everything's where you left it, unless you have kids. Um, but but you, you see what I'm saying. And right. so it's, it's, we're able to keep people rational. Plus, when you're working with a team, because often we have a mental health person who's facilitating the meetings, we have a financial person who is making sure that you understand the money. So it's not over here, just a black cloud hanging over your head that you don't really understand. Um, Then uh, things become much more rational and easy. They become easy. 
I love that. All right. So that's where we're going to end it. Um, where can people find more information on you, Attorney Jordan Jenkins? I know you're in the Tampa area, but, you know, we, we are worldwide on. Uh, well, yes. And, and when it comes to divorce, uh, I'm Florida wide right. <laughs> because we're now on Zoom. So, yes. you know, let's, let's get on with the program. Yes. Um, I am available at openpalmlaw.com. So you can, that's my website. You can find me at Joran at openpalmlaw. All right. Sounds good. Attorney Joran Jenkins, award-winning family lawyer, legal strategist, and best-selling author of many books, including War or Peace, Avoid the Destruction of Divorce Court, and I Never Saw My Father Again, The Divorce Court Effect. Um, she is also available for consultation, as you can tell. And uh, we've been talking about divorcing during COVID. If anyone is going through this, please give her a call, openpalmlaw.com, um, you know, just to see if it can be a better result for you instead of being in court. So uh, 40 plus experience. Don't you tell anybody else that age because they won't believe it, ma'am. <laughs> you look great. <laughs> you are a sweetheart. <laughs> Thank you so much, Attorney Jordan Jenkins. And don't forget to check us out on all of our social media at City of Miramar, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You've been watching Good Morning Miramar. I'm your host, Tamara G. Until next time. Thanks, Andy, our producer as well. Bye-bye.